Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Tremaine. <laughs> Hello. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Marsha. I'm glad you called. But I don't see how I can make it tonight, Angel. I have to locate a girl. Is she attractive? Well, I know one guy who fell for her. Did he fall hard? They're burying him tomorrow. Once again, the Mutual Broadcasting System brings you the adventures of the Falcon. One thing about Michael Waring, the Falcon, he certainly gets around. You met him first in his best-selling novel. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. And now we're happy to bring you again his adventures on the air. Yes, it's Michael Waring, that freelance detective who's always ready with a hand for oppressed men. And an eye for repressed women. So join him tonight when the Falcon learns murder is a knockout. It's 10.30 at night in New York, and in Madison Square Garden, the sixth round of the main event is underway. At the ringside, blonde Kay Davis looks from the fighters to her escort, Vic Jones whose good-looking but rather weak face is chalk white as he sees the boy he is rooting for taking a bad licking. Come on, Wallace. Keep that left up. Keep it up. Oh. This would like the finish. Come on, Walters. One, two, three. Well, there it is. Come on, Walters. Get up. Oh, don't disturb him. Vicky needs his Get up, That does it. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to let me have five bills. What gave you that idea? I was on Walters. I wasn't. Oh, now, don't be like that, baby. Come on, now on, Vic. That's exactly how I'm going to be. I've played sucker long enough. i got to have that dough, Kay. What's the matter? You've got a broken leg. You want money? Work for it. I'm going to have plenty, but it'll take a little time. I have a lot of irons in the fire. You have one iron in the fire. Me. And I'm tired of getting burned. Okay, baby, you figure you got burned. So now you want to chill? Well, that's just what you're going to get. Anyway, it was nice knowing. Now, wait a minute, Vic. I'm not asking for a sign-off. That's what you think. And I was right. About what? You were only using me for what you could get out of me. If there weren't people around here, I'd kick your teeth in for that. Because I'm right. Oh, what are we fighting for, kid? You know it's you and me no matter what. We we can't help ourselves. Wait a minute, huh? Oh, what's the matter? Let's get out of here quick. What is it? Come on. We'll be aisle jammed. Well, we can push our way through. Oh. Excuse me, please. Oh, oh, hurry up, Vic. Well, what goes? You see that character over there, the one on the gray hat? He's looking this way. Oh. Well, what about him? He works for Alexo. Oh. You think he saw you? I know he did. That's why he's here. Alexo knows I like to fight. Yeah. We'll have to shake him, Vic. He'll want to trail me and find out where I live. Is he following? I, 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 I don't know. I, I can't see him now. Oh, good. And that means he can't see us either. No. Well, you can only keep it that way. We'll be all right. Hello, Hagen. How do you know my 
name. Kay pointed you out to fight tonight. Sorry she couldn't stay around to see you, but she wasn't feeling sociable. She went home. Uh, I apologize. What do you want? Alexo, is he here? No. Doesn't get in until tomorrow morning. What do you want to see him about? I have a um, proposition for him. He's looking for Kay. I, I know where he can find him. Come on in. I'm handling things for Alexa. You can talk to me. Right. What's your name? Jones. Vic Jones. And what's your proposition? 500 on the line. That's kind of steep. Oh, I wouldn't say so. When Kay pulled out, out of L.A., she took 75000 of Alexa's money with her. Five P's isn't much to get it back. I'll find her sooner or later, whether you help or not. Yeah, sure, but while you're looking, she'll be dipping into 75 grand. She could uh, burn up a lot more than five bills before you reach her. Hmm. Got a point. Well, do we do business? Uh, I don't. All right, Joan. The deal. She's in New York. A detective in Chicago, sir, by a ticket to New York. Maybe she went on through. Florida, maybe. I think she's here. I wouldn't have come all the way from L.A. if I wasn't pretty sure. Well, what should we do? I've already wired Mike Waring. The Falcon? Yep. You don't want that bird snooping into your activities. He won't. All I'm going to have him do is locate the girl. Oh, I don't like it. You know, Hagen, sometimes I get the idea you don't want me to find Kay. What? Now, look, Alexo, I turned the town inside out trying to find her. I hope you did. Because if I find out you are lying, you are the one that's going to be turned inside out. How do you do, Mr. Waring? Hello. You must be Alexo. That's right. Come in. Nice trip. Not bad. Well, uh, what can I do for you? I, uh, I want you to find my sister. So you said in your wire. What can you give me on her? Uh, here's a picked him. Mm. When did you last see her? In Los Angeles two weeks ago. And she disappeared without any warning. Yes. You have any reason to run away? Not that I know of. What makes you think she's in New York? Well, I thought she might have gone to Chicago. Why? She used to live there, so I sent her picture to a Chicago detective. He located her, but before I could get there, she bought a ticket to New York and paid it again. Have you notified the police? No, I don't want her to get the idea. I think she's done anything wrong. Why are you smiling, Mr. Wayne? I didn't realize I was. So, you have a detective looking for her in Chicago and me in New York. Anybody else? Well, some of my boys are looking for her. Boys? Oh, fellows who work for me. Doing what? They work for me in my business. What is your business? What's that got to do with this? You never know. Look, Waring, I didn't come here for a third degree. You came here to get me to find someone for you, so I have to know things about her. And you. What do you want to know? Why you've been lying to me? Hmm? You say you haven't any idea why she disappeared, but still you're sure right away it's a long-distance fade-out. You don't want the police in it. You burn when I ask what business you're in. I don't like the way it adds up. All right, Waring. You don't want the job. Sorry I bothered you. Who says I don't want the job? You just said... I said you were lying. But if that picture does the girl justice, I still could be persuaded to look for her. You know something, Waring? Somehow I don't think I'll try to persuade you. You know something, Alexa? Somehow I didn't think you would. Hello, Kay. Higgins. How come a girl of your looks is eating alone? Maybe I like it that way. Nobody likes to eat alone. I'll join you. How did you know where to find me? Maybe I followed you last night and found out where you stand. Not unless you're invisible. I made sure I wasn't followed. Well, here I am. 
so I see. What would you do if I told you Alexo's in town? What? Does he know where I am? Not yet. Thank heaven. So thank heaven, thank me, Cave. And I know just how you can show your gratitude. Oh, you do? Yeah. You have 75 grand of Alexo's money, but I'm a generous guy. I'll let you keep 50 of it. Thank you, Hagen. Don't mention it. I'll finish your lunch. We'll go pick up my 25. Don't I get time to think it over? What do you have to think? You either want to keep 50,000 or you keep nothing. All right. I'll bring you the money tonight. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not letting you out of my sight till I have the cash in my hand. I'm not giving you a chance to run away again. You don't miss any tricks, do you? I can't afford to. I bid a grand slam. Believe me, Kay, I'm going to make it. idea of going in the alley. There are usually no parking places on the street, so I leave the car here and go in the back way. Oh. Okay. Let's go get the dump. All right. Wait a minute. You're parked too close to the building. I can't get out here. Well, slide over. You can get out on this side. I'll get out first. Okay. I hope you don't have the bright idea that you can make a break for it while I'm trying to get out, because if you do, I'm going... Oh! Dirty rat. Huh? What's the matter? You know what's the matter. Get out of my way. I'm coming in. Well, I don't know if you'd only tell me. I suppose you didn't tip Hagen where to find me. What? Well, why would I do that? You did it. You must know why. Hey, wait a minute. Well, where'd you get that gun? From Hagen. How? He tried to make a deal with me. 25000 not to tip Electro. I played along. Well, what happened? We drove into the alley behind my building. When he was getting out of the car, I clouded him with a flashlight. Then I got his gun. <laughs> You're quite a girl. I can take care of myself. And I can take care of anybody who tries to cross me. I didn't cross you, baby. You gotta believe that. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, Alexa still doesn't know where I am. And you are not tipping me. Of course I won't. I'm glad we're agreed on that. But just to make sure... Wait. Now, don't. Be be careful with that gun. Stand right where you are. Don't try to get to that window. You're not getting out of here. Well, there's... There's always the window. Hello. Hello, Kay. Vic. Well, that was a great stunt you pulled. Yeah, lucky I only live on the second floor. Anyway, it was better than getting shot. I wasn't going to shoot you. Well, it looked like it. All I wanted was... Never mind that now. All right. What do you want? I've been looking for Hagen. Finally found him. You did? Yeah, he's still in the alley where you left him. You sure pack a wallop. I gave him everything I could. You sure did. Well, why are you calling? I thought I ought to tip you off, even if you do think I double-crossed you. Tip me off for what? The police have already found Hagen. If you're going to blow, you'll have to hurry. Why should I blow? Well, you have a story ready in case they call on you? You're not calling on me. Hagen won't tell them anything about me. I know too much about him and Alexa. You're right, Hagen won't tell the police anything. But the reason he won't tell them isn't that he's afraid. It's that he's dead. When sudden death calls, wearing a white tie and leaving a calling card in the form of a 45 caliber slug, it's frequently just another case for the falcon. But when wholesale disaster threatens a community, that's the time when everyone thinks in terms of the Red Cross. The 1949 Red Cross campaign has set its sights on the sum of $60 million to assault the problems that lie ahead this year. The increased total of disasters in the last year, the expanding national blood program, the large number of community services, all these require greater Red Cross efforts, made possible only by the financial support and volunteer participation of the people. Remember this. You, through your contributions and voluntary action, are the Red Cross, providing a channel through which compassion and mercy find expression in the relief of human suffering. 
you too can help through your Red Cross. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's a couple of hours since the body of Hagen was found in an alley behind the apartment house where Kay Davis lived. Now, Peter Alexo, the client whom Mike Waring had rejected, is once again at Waring's door. Oh, you again, Alexo. Yes, may I come in? I want to talk to you. Okay. All right, what is it? Waring, I don't suppose I could persuade you to forget my visit to you this morning. Persuade me how? Uh, money. Why? I have my reasons. What would it cost for you to forget that you ever saw me? Sorry, Alexo, my memory's too good. Yeah. I was afraid you'd take this attitude. Well, then, Waring, there's just one thing to do. There'll be cards on the table. Well, it's about time. Waring, um, the girl I wanted you to find. Yes? She is not my sister. <laughs> Surprise. She was my girlfriend. Ran away with another man. I want her back. Mm-hmm. But I don't intend to risk a murder rap to get her. Where does murder come in? I had one of my boys, Joey Hagen, looking for Kay. Seems he found her. According to the paper, he's been murdered. And you figure she did it? I don't know, Waring. How about her boyfriend? A possibility. I want you to look into it. All right. As long as you don't start acting coy again. I can't now. The police are bound to find out Hagen was on my payroll. You figure the police will think you killed him. If we don't find the girl, I'm the only person in New York who had any connection with him. Uh-huh. What I'd like would be to hop a plane back to the coast and make like I've never been here. But that would require your cooperation. I haven't been able to buy that. So your next best bet is to get me to crack the case for you. Or at least find Kay. Only now, whatever I find out, I turn over to the police instead of to you. Whatever you say. All right, Alexo. I'll do what I can. Good. I wish you luck. Thanks. And considering what happened to the last fellow who tracked down your girl for you, I'm going to need it. Homicide Squad, Lieutenant Gleason speaking. Hello, Gleason. Mike Waring. Sorry, Waring. We don't have a thing for you. How do you know? You don't know what I want. I know what we've got. Oh, you're too modest. You ought to be able to give me something on the Hagen case. Well, I told don't you. you I don't you have any suspects? A girl, but. A girl? She could... Gleason, you interest me strangely. Well, before you start dancing in the streets, Waring, we don't have very much on her, only that Hagen was found in an alley behind the building where she lived. Her address was in his pocket, but. She claims she didn't know him. We can't prove different. We're checking, but... Never mind that. What does she look like? Blonde, bleached, about 5'5", five, five, good-looking, but a little on the husky side for a dame. That's enough, Gleason. Where can I find her? Uh, at home, I guess. We're not holding her yet. But well, what goes, Mike? I'll let you know after I've seen her. And if she's who I think she is, the answer to your question is plenty. <laughs> What do you want? You are. I'm what? The girl in the picture. What picture? That Alexo showed me. What? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know any Alexo. Well, uh, let me come in and I'll tell you all about no, it. No, you don't. All right. Then I go to the police and tell them that the Karen Dorrance they questioned is really Kay Davis of Los Angeles. And Joey Hagen came to New York for the express purpose of finding her. You win. Come in. Thanks. And now, Mr... Waring. Mike Waring. The Falcons. You're working for Alexo. Mm-hmm. The police know about him yet? Not yet. But I'll have to turn what I have over to them pretty soon. I don't think you will. Hey, that's not very smart, pulling a gun. You're not going to talk. All right. I don't talk. The police have a corpse. They'll check on its background. It'll lead them to Alexo, and that'll lead them to you. I don't know what to do. I have to have time to think. <laughs> Should have thought before you killed Hagen. I didn't kill him. He came here to see you. Yes. And you didn't want him to report back to Alexo. He wasn't going to report back. Why not? He wanted me to pay him not to. Oh. And you agreed. I was going to think it over. But uh, killing him was a cheaper out. I tell you, I didn't kill him. I want to ask you something, Mr. Waring. Go ahead. What is Alexo paying you? Why? Whatever it is, I'll double it if you'll work for me. Sounds like the same deal Hagen got. And look what happened to him. No. No, I've given up trying to get away from Alexo. I, I see it's no use. But I'm in a spot with a murder. Maybe you can help clear me. Maybe. Unless you're guilty. I'm not. 
Well, what do you say? All right, Kay. You've hired yourself a detective. Hello? Huh? You must be Vic Jones. Huh? Who are you? Mike Waring. What do you want? You. If you are, Jones, you fit Kay's description. I've been waiting in front of the building for you to come home. Kay sent you? I'm working for her. Why did she send you here? As a matter of fact, she didn't. That was my idea. She wants me to work on the Hagen case. I thought you might know something. What would I know? Plenty. If you're the murderer. What? Why would I want to kill Hagen? You wanted Kay for yourself. Alexa wanted her back. Hagen found her for him. You could have killed Hagen to keep him from reporting. Eh, there's only one trouble with that, Waring. Yeah, what? Kay and I had already split up last night. So why should I care if Alexa found her? Well, it looks like my client has been holding back on me. Unless you're lying. If you don't believe me, ask Kay. I may do that. But first, I'd like to ask you a few more questions. Yeah, yeah, sure. But let's not stand out here in the street. We can, we can go inside. All right. I... I don't understand, Waring. If if you're working for Kay, how come you thought I killed Hagen? Why shouldn't I? I didn't know you and she had split up. But didn't she tell you what happened with Hagen? What did happen? Oh, well, if you don't know, I'm not saying. Why? I've had enough trouble with Kay. She thought I tipped Hagen off about her. I think I've convinced her. I, I didn't by now, but I'm not going to give her any other reason to blow up. Oh, yeah. She blew up, huh? Yeah. Well, why did she care if Hagen found her, since she'd already split with you? On account of the 75 grand. What? What 75 grand? Well, didn't she tell you that either? No. Didn't tell you much. Well, seems not. Well, in that case, there's not much I can do for you either. But if you know anything... Here, here we are. No use, Waring, I'm not talking. So you might as well run along. Oh, no, not yet. Well, I tell you, I'm not going... What's the matter? Somebody in the bedroom. I'm going to go see. Who's there? I don't hear anything, Jones. Hey, the window's open. The fire escape. See anyone, Jones? I don't know. I don't know. It's dark out there. Wait a minute. There's someone in the courtyard in the shadows. Hey, you down there, stop! Stop! Okay, pal, you ask for it. high western action adventure for you on Mutual's thrilling new radio program, Straight Arrow. For the first time in radio history, a full-blooded American Indian becomes the central figure of a radio drama, a champion of law and order, a dynamic hero in action-packed struggles. The incomparable Straight Arrow presents the vanishing American in his true light. You'll find swift-paced entertainment when you hear the bold and daring Straight Arrow on Mutual. <laughs> Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Mike Waring and Vic Jones surprised an intruder in Jones's apartment. Now, in another part of town, Kay Davis stands outside the door of a hotel room. Kay. Hello, Alexa. This is a surprise. I thought it would be. <laughs> Come in. All right. I see you'll never give up, Alexo, and I'm tired of running. And here I am. Good. Tell me something. Was it me or the money that you were really after? Don't you know? I feel like a jerk. I'm no Bobby Foxer, but I really had it bad with that crumb, Vic. That's all over now. I'm glad to hear that. Now we can go back and pick up where we left off. Aren't you forgetting something? What? A little matter of murder? Oh, that's, that's right. But I think I know how we can take care of that. Oh. If we play it right, stick together, we ought to be able to pin this on Vic. Stone? Oh. Try this on the side. For 75 grand. Suppose I'm not the one who took it from you. Vic did. And ran off with me. But I didn't know it was your money. 
Couldn't he say that? Then what? So you weren't really looking for me. You were looking for Vic. The only reason you tried to find me was that I could lead you to Vic. Oh, sure, I get it. Then when Hagen found you, Vic had to kill him to keep me away from the two of you. That's it. It gives him a motive. Yeah. I've already started on it. I planted your briefcase, the one I took the money in, 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 in Vic's apartment tonight. He almost caught me at it, but I got away. Great. I think we can make it stick. Well, well this calls for a drink, beautiful, uh, a celebration. Uh-uh. Who's that? I don't know. But whoever it is, remember our story. Sure, kiddo, sure. Hello, Alexo. Thought I ought to report. May I come in? Wearing, of course. Come in. Thanks. Oh, my other client's here, too. Oh, well, good. Hello, Kay. Hello, Mr. Waring. Your other client? Yeah. I have no objection to a double fee, since you both want me to do the same job. Crack Hagen's murder. Oh. Kay, why didn't you tell me you were the one who beat Hagen's head in? What? Who told you that? Vic? Nope. He must have. He's the only one who... Who what? Who knew? Uh, and don't reach for that gun again. No. Right on, you know. no. I'll, I'll take that. Give me that. That's better. As a matter of fact, Kay, nobody told me. But you told me yourself Hagen found you. And he wouldn't have let you get away from him again unless he couldn't help himself. You admitted you didn't pay him. Well, I... I didn't mean to kill him. It was an accident. I just wanted to knock him out so I could get away. She killed him, but I thought... No, that... no, Alex, no. She didn't. What? But she thought she did. That's why she's been so hysterical. What? I've checked with the police. Hagen's head was covered with blood. But there was no blood in the alley where he was found. That means he was killed somewhere else and brought there. But how does that mean that Kay she didn't... She wouldn't have planted the body right behind her own apartment building. It would point to directly toward her. Oh, I see. But Vic knew I'd not Hagen out in the alley, so he brought the body there to frame me. It, it was Vic. Not necessarily. Hagen recovered and left. He could have told anyone else what happened. That's right. But who else would have wanted to kill Hagen? How about you, Alexa? <laughs> Me? Hagen double-crossed you? You wanted revenge? You killed him. I didn't. I didn't know about the double-cross. Then you tried to frame Kay. No. It's no use, Alexo. All I need is a few more answers from Kay, and I'll have all the facts I need. And now that she realizes how you tried to frame her, I think she'll give them to me. What is this wearing? I hired you to clear me. You hired me to solve the case, Alexo. And that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> That's right, Joan. Oh, I'm sure glad you saw through it. How, how, did, how did you know Alexa was the murderer? Well, I didn't. I was just uh, feeling my way. First, I eliminated Kay. The body being planted in the alley cleared her. Yeah, yeah, you told me. But then there was one fact I had to get straight. Yeah, what was that? How Alexa and Kay got together. Kay could tell me, but I had to make sure she was telling the truth. And that's why I accused Alexa. What? Yeah. Because if she thought Alexa was the murderer and that he had tried to frame her, then she wouldn't try to protect him. So I accused him. And then I asked how Alexo found her. She said he didn't find her, that she went to see him herself tonight. So why? Well, don't you see? Alexo wanted to find Kay and his $75,000. Hagen knew where Kay was. So Alexo would never have killed Hagen until Hagen had talked. And he obviously hadn't talked because Alexo was still looking for her. Which means Alexo didn't kill Hagen either. But if he didn't... If he didn't, and Kay didn't, that just leaves... <laughs> yeah, that's right. You, Jones. Uh, but why would I? I, I Kay told you. tried to kill you because she thought you'd tipped Hagen off about where to find her. You denied tipping him. You hoped to convince Kay of your denial. But you couldn't if Hagen told her the truth. You killed him to shut him up. Well, there it is. Isn't it a shame, Jones? What? That they went to the trouble of trying to frame you when you were guilty the whole time? <laughs> Death is a one-armed bandit. Death is a one-armed bandit. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that when it comes to slot machines, there's more than one way to make a killing. So be sure to listen next week at this time to another exciting Adventure of the Falcon. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written tonight by Gene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis.
Music by Emerson Buckley, composed by Richard DuPage. Les Tremaine was starred as the Falcon, with Beverly Roberts as Kay. Russ Dunbar speaking. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Rita, I'm glad you called, Angel, but we'll have to make it another time. A man has disappeared with some of his company's money. His employers can't wait to find out what's become of them. In fact, it looks like the suspense may kill them. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels, then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. And now NBC is happy to bring you his adventures on the air. Yes, it's Michael Wary, that freelance detective who's always ready with a hand for oppressed men and an eye for repressed women. So join him now when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Amorous Bookkeeper. It's late Sunday night in New York, and Lucille Landis is worried. Lucille is the tall, willowy brunette who is gliding down the hall of the third floor in the Tremont building. She stops at the door of the Style Center dress company, pauses briefly with her hand on the knob, then shrugs daintily and opens the door. Her partner, large, paunchy Barney Murdoch, looks up from the books on the desk in front of him as she enters. Ah, at last. Come in, come in. All right, Barney. Now, what is it? You were so excited on the phone. I... Come here. Sit down. Well? I've been suspicious for some time. Didn't say anything because I didn't want to alarm you if, uh, well, if I was wrong. Unfortunately, I am not. Well, for heaven's sake, will you tell me what it's all about? Must be pretty important to get you to the office on Sunday and then have you send for me. Yes, it's pretty important. I've had an accountant down here all day. What do you think? Something wrong with the books? Hard to believe. Finch has been with us for, well, almost from the beginning, and he's such a mild little guy. What's wrong? Has he made a mistake? Mistake? Yeah, quite a mistake to think he could get away with it. He's been taking us, Lucille, for the last six months. Are you sure? Oh, I can't believe it. It's all here, black and white. How much? Nearly $30,000. Oh, no, that's impossible. $30,000 in six months. I thought our profit was off for the volume we were doing, but I couldn't find anything. So I've had an expert go over it. He's found where Finch has been juggling. Well, what do we do? What can we do? Have the police here when Finch comes to work tomorrow. I hope he hasn't spent it all. Yes, I suppose so. Oh, poor little fella. But if he's a thief... For 30000 we can waive sympathy. Well, now, come on, let me show you. That's why I asked you down. I want you to see what the accountant pointed out so you'll understand. Well, you know I can't make heads or tails out of figures. I leave all that part of the business to you. If you say Finch has been robbing us, well, that's it. You ought to take more of an interest. Well, I do in designing and production. But believe me, Barney, when it comes to bookkeeping, I don't know a debit from a ledger. All right, Lucille, if that's the way you want it. That's the way. Now, let's call the police, shall we? <laughs> Here I am, Finchie. Oh, Lucille, I've been looking for you. I, I didn't see you in this back booth. Oh, that's why I picked it. I don't want us to be seen. Uh, sit down. Uh, you don't have to worry. Cora doesn't know it's about us. It's not your wife we have to worry about anymore, Finchie. What do you mean? The jig's up. Barney had an accountant work on the books today. Oh, dear. To put it mildly. What'll we do? 
Well, you've got to get out of town. Oh, I knew it would come to this sooner or later. I knew it. Oh, good. Nothing like being prepared. We'll, we'll go to California. Hmm? We? Oh, are you taking Cora? No, no, you. Oh, Finchie, don't be silly. What? But uh, I don't want to leave you. Well, you don't have much choice. You'll join me later? No, I'll think about it. You won't join me. You want to get rid of me? Now, Finchie. Well, you're acting so so cold. I'm worried, that's all. I should think you'd want to go with me, if you really loved me. Let's not go into that now. Sometimes I think... Uh, I just wonder if you've just been using me to juggle the books for you now that I'm no more used to I'm you. tipping you off, aren't I, so you can get away? Yes, but... Well, maybe you don't want me talking. Well, I don't, but... Uh... I've got to know the truth. I've got to... You let go of my wrist. Do you love me? Answer me, Lucille. Do you oh, love please, me? Finchie. Do you? Well, you asked for it. I know it. I know it all the time. Look in the mirror sometime, Finchie. Did you think for one minute stop, that Stop, I... stop. Don't say it. I didn't think even for one minute. Not really. I pretended, that's all. The whole thing was just like a dream. Just a daydream. Now it's turned into a nightmare. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Honestly. <laughs> you better be for yourself. You're in this with me, Lucille. And I may decide not to go to California. I may stay, see? And I may talk. Oh, Finchie, don't be silly. You juggled the books. You took the money. And there's nothing to prove you gave any of it to me or that I knew anything about it. But you wanted me to get out of town. Well, partly for your sake and partly because I don't like unpleasantness. I can deny anything you say. But I'd rather not be bothered. A little unpleasantness, that's all you're afraid of. Well, just don't underestimate me, Lucille. I'm warning you now. Don't underestimate me. Thanks for the tip. Barney Murdoch underestimated me. It cost him $30,000. Cora underestimated me. She wouldn't believe I could ever have a woman like you. Well, I did. Maybe someday people will find out that Elliot Finch is... is... Oh, what am I talking about? Lucille, don't leave me, please. I'm scared. Good night, Finchie. Uh, Lucille! She hates me. No, she doesn't even hate me. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? <laughs> Michael Waring? That's right. My name is Barney Murdoch, Style Center Dress Company. Want to hire you. Oh, <laughs> I never was much good on hemstitching. All right, you've had your joke. Now may I come in? <laughs> yeah, sure. Thanks. They call you the Falcon or some such falderall, don't they? Oh, I've been called every kind of falderall in the book. Well, I'm not much for fancy names, but I understand your shop can deliver the goods. That's what I want. Oh, just what goods do you have in mind? I want you to find a man for me. What man? Name's Elliot Finch, bookkeeper. Worked for us until today. Didn't show up for work this morning, and his wife doesn't know where he is. Well, how much did he get away with? How'd you know about that? Well, when the bookkeeper disappears and his boss rushes frantically to a detective... Good, you're on the ball. 30,000, Waring. 30,000 nice round simoleons. Hmm. Well, to coin a couple of cliches, Finch certainly believed in making hay. And, brother, that ain't hay. What's in it for me? Your fee is... Fifty dollars uh, a day in expenses. I'll give you five hundred dollars. If the job's done in less than ten days, keep the change. Well, fair enough. Tell me something, Murdoch. When did you discover Finch's defalcation? Yesterday. And today, Finch disappears. Yeah, I've been wondering about that. Don't see how he knew we'd found out about him. Well, who did know, besides yourself? Just the accountant. I had work on the books. And my partner, Lucy Landis... But surely neither of oh, them... Oh, you would... trust them implicitly? Of course. Mm -hmm. As much as you trusted Finch until this happened? What are you trying to suggest? Oh, just thinking out loud. And in my business, you don't get very far if your thoughts are all sweetness and light. Very good, Waring. Suspicious of everyone. Probably just as well. Although I don't think... Uh... Uh, then I'll leave the speculation to you. All right, Murdoch. And as soon as I have something concrete, I'll let you know. <laughs> What is it? Are you Mrs. Finch? Yes. My name's Michael Waring. 
I'm looking for your husband. He isn't here. I know that. How do you know? What do you want with him? Are you from Style Center? In a way. Get out of here. Go on back to Mr. Murdoch. Tell him all he's lost is $30,000. I've lost a husband. Well, perhaps I can help. Help! Elliot's gone. Run away. And he's not too well, Mr... What did you say your name was? Waring. I'm telling you this. Jail would kill him. He's never been strong. But he was a good husband and a good employee. For 25 years, and then... Well... We all make mistakes. Temptation. Yes, I know how you feel, Mrs. Finch, but... Oh, no, you don't. You wouldn't be here. Trying to find him so you can take him to jail, so you can kill him. All right, Mrs. Finch. I... What was that? What? A door closed in the back of the apartment. I didn't hear anything. Maybe the wind. And maybe your husband. No, he isn't here. How do you know? Maybe he just came in the back. He didn't. He wouldn't. Come on, let's go see. No, Elliot. Elliot, if you're here, get out. There's somebody here looking for you. All right, Cora. Elliot... He wants to take you to jail. He's not going to take me to jail. But where did you get that gun? I, I found it. Now, look, no. Finch. Please, I don't want to listen to any lectures. I, I took the money, I admit it. I can't pay it back either. But I'm not going to jail. I'm sorry about this, Cora, but you know the whole story. You know there's nothing I can do. So this is all that's left. Goodbye, Cora. Finch, wait. Ah! During the months to come, General Mills has planned to bring radio listeners an excitingly new half-hour show each weekday evening. Not just one, not two, but six thrilling half-hour shows. Two of these shows have already joined the Wheaties' big parade. On Monday's Night Beat brings you tales of newspaper columnist Randy Stone, who hacks stories out of the shadows to make good reading in the morning papers. Join us here tomorrow for Night Beat. And then on Wednesday... You can follow the fast-moving adventures of Brian Dunleavy on A Dangerous Assignment. More to come in the Wheaties' big parade of NBC shows will be a frolicking series starring Penny Singleton and a comedy detective series with a feminine punch starring Sarah Berner. Dimension X, NBC's exciting science fiction series, will also join the big parade along with true stories of North America's oldest law enforcement body, the Texas Rangers. You'll hear all of them in the Wheaties' big parade of NBC shows. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Half an hour has passed since Elliot Finch tried to shoot his way out of his troubles by putting a bullet in himself. Finch has been rushed to a hospital, and now Mike is talking to Cora Finch, who is just recovering from the shock. Is there anyone you'd like me to get to stay with you? Only Elliot. That's impossible. Well, if you'd help me, perhaps we what could... What could I do? You say Mr. Finch was a model husband. He was. Well, men don't just change overnight unless something happens. Now, what happened to make him suddenly take money from the firm? I told you, temptation finally got the better of him. What temptation? Money. Well, it took its time. He'd been with the company for years. It grows with time. Mm-hmm. And that's all? He didn't have any sudden need for money? No. What did he do with the money? Oh, please, after what I've been through, do I have to go through this third degree? I'm just trying to help. Like you helped Elliot, hounded him, killed him. Now, look, Mrs. Finch, in the first place, I had nothing to do with your husband shooting himself. In the second place, he's not dead, and but in the third place... He's not... not dead. Well, didn't you know? But they, they carried him out. I, I the thought... The doctor told you. Oh, I was so dazed... I... You're telling me the truth? Yes, of course. No, you're, you're just trying to fool me. All you're... right, call the hospital. He's really alive, Elliot's really alive. Here's the phone. <laughs> now hold it. Stop it. I'm sorry. Now, that's better. Now, do you want to call? Yes. Give me the phone. <laughs> Yes? Mr. Waring is here, Mr. Murdoch. All right, send him in. Already. Oh, Waring, come in. Come in. Any news? Yeah, I found Finch. What? Good boy. That was fast. Well, I love to take bows, Murdoch, but I'm afraid I don't rate one on this. He walked in on me, that's all. Walked in on you? Where? At his home. I thought he'd skipped. No, he had no place to go. Well, uh, uh, where is he? 
In the hospital. He tried to kill himself. Uh, tried to? Tried to, you say? Mm-hmm. They're working on him now. He's still unconscious, but the doctors give him a good chance. Hmm. He tried it while you were still at his place? That's right. Why'd you let him do it? He had a gun. What could I do? Guns don't usually stop the falcon, do they? Well, sometimes. Don't want to get in a rut. Did he say anything about the money? To his wife. It's gone. All of it? So she said. Where? Gambling? So she didn't say. Hmm. Another woman, maybe. Maybe. Where's your partner? Lucille? She hasn't come in yet today. Mm -hmm. Interesting coincidence, wouldn't you say? What? Day after Finch's dirty work is discovered, he doesn't come to work, and neither does Lucille. Oh, she often doesn't come in till afternoon. It's afternoon? You're hinting at something, Waring. You hinted at it before. I'm just trying not to overlook any possibilities. Well, but... Yes? There's a Sergeant Corbett of the police here. He wants to talk to you. Oh, just a minute. Must be something about the robbery, Waring. I'll see him in a minute. Well, no, it's first, not I... just the robbery, Murdoch. Corbett is with the homicide squad. Homicide? Mm -hmm. But who... What, what homicide? Ask Corbett. Yeah. Uh, send the sergeant in. Yes, Mr. Murdoch. You said Finch tried to kill himself, Waring. Well, that's suicide, not murder. Besides, it didn't work. That's right. Hello, Corbett. Waring. Well, now my day's complete. Mm -hmm. And what can we do for you? You can sit tight and keep your mouth shut. I want to talk to Mr. Murdoch. Well, what's it about, Sergeant? Your partner, Lucille Landis. Lucille? She's been murdered. What? What do you know about it, Murdoch? I guess that's about all I can tell you, Sergeant. All right, Murdoch, stick around. We may want to talk to you again. Sure thing. Good day, Sergeant. So long. Goodbye, Waring. Bye-bye, Corbett. I'll see you down at headquarters later. There are a few things I'd like to find out. And you think we can help you? You flatter the department, Waring. I thought you're the guy who likes to tell us, not ask us. Oh, you're all right for routine, Corbett. If it's simple. Hmm. He expects us to give him what we got after that. <laughs> You will, Corbett, in spite of yourself. Your irresistible charm, no doubt. Why, Corbett, you do care. Ah, I've <laughs> got work to do. <laughs> All right, Waring. Your friend, the sergeant's gone. You can stop being cute. I want results, and I want them fast. What results? Proof that Finch killed Lucille. And if he didn't? He did. Must have. She got him to jockey the books. Did she? Look, it's your idea. You've been hinting at it right along. Yeah, Tell me something, Murdoch. What? Just when did you catch on to my hint? Now, wait a minute, Waring. I don't like that kind of a question. You're supposed to be working for me. Well, why so touchy, Murdoch? All I said... I know what you said. Now, listen to me. I hired you to find Finch. You did. Okay. Now I'm hiring you to prove he killed Lucille. For an additional thousand dollars. Do you want the job or don't you? Well, why are you so anxious to pin this on Finch? Because he killed Lucille. Well, if she was double-crossing you... Get out of here, Waring. I'll get somebody who can take orders. No, 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 not so fast, Murdoch. A job's a job, and money's money. You want me to nail Finch? Okay, I'll nail him. I just wondered why you're so anxious. Because he's guilty. Oh. All right, if you say so. Well, if you don't think no, so... Oh, I do, I do. All right, then. After all, Murdoch, the customer's always right. What more proof do I need? <laughs> Hello, Sergeant. Told you I'd be around. Yeah, Waring. Well, what have you got for me? For you, nothing. Well, now, look, Corbett, if you want me to solve this case for You're you... You're a little late, Waring. We've taken care of that little detail already. You've made an arrest? We will. We know who we want. We know where to find him. You got the wrong man. Oh, we have. Naturally. How do you know who I'm talking about? Don't need to. I know you, Corbett. Bound to be wrong. <sighs> I don't know why I put up with this guy. <laughs> you can't do without me. Now, would you like me to tell you who really killed the Landis girl? Yeah, tell me. Elliot Finch. Oh, Finch. That's right. And just how do you know it was Finch? Because I know which side my bread is buttered on. That makes a lot of sense. Does to me. I like butter. All right. Now, would you like me to tell you who pulled the job? Yeah, who did it? Finch. What? Only I happen to be able to prove it. I don't believe it. They took the bullet out of Finch's shoulder. It came from the same gun that did the murder. Oh, no, there must be some mistake. There's no mistake, Waring. 
But, Sergeant, if you and I agree with each other, one of us is bound to be wrong. <laughs> Next Sunday, along with the high-spirited adventures of the Falcon, include two new dramatic Sunday mysteries. From the celebrated Office of Strategic Services, NBC presents fully authenticated stories of the OSS in action during World War II. Cloak and Dagger presents actual cases adapted from the famous book of the same name. Another of the startling new NBC presentations is The Big Guy. He's Joshua Sharp, who supports two wonderful children while working as a keen, quick-witted detective. To his two children, he's Joshua Sharp, the fabulous hero, giant among giants. He's the big guy. Next Sunday, along with the adventures of the Falcon, make a date to hear fully authenticated stories on Cloak and Dagger and a new and different kind of detective, Joshua Sharp, the big guy. Hear them all next Sunday over most of these same NBC stations. <laughs> Back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's 20 minutes since Mike Waring and Sergeant Corbett startled each other by seeing eye to eye on a case. Now they're at the hospital to see Elliot Finch. They find Mrs. Finch in the waiting room. Hello, Mrs. Finch. How's your husband? He's regained consciousness, but I haven't been able to talk to him yet. They're giving him a transfusion, and then they say I can go in again. Not until I do. Well, who are you? Oh, excuse me. Mrs. Finch, this is Sergeant Corbett of the police. I might have known. Can't they give him any rest even now? I'm sorry, Mrs. Finch. I'll bet wait. you are. I can see it written all over you. Yeah, why do they always have to have families? You stay here with her wearing. I'm going inside. But, Sergeant, oh, I... You just... better do as he says, Mrs. Finch. I don't know why you all have to pick on Elliot anyway. He doesn't have the money. He only took it because that woman made him. She's the one who has it. Lucille Landis? Yes. If you want the money, ask her. Now, we'd like to, but there's one catch. Well, what's that? She's dead. She... How did that happen? Somebody killed her. But what I'd like to know, Mrs. Finch, since you know about your husband and Miss Landis, how come you didn't tell me about her before? Because I didn't want to. I don't have to account to you. No, but you did account to me. Everything except that you knew about Miss Landis. Why do you make so much of that? Because you must have had some reason for holding back. I'm not holding back. I, I've just told you about her. Yeah, I know. That's what puzzles me. It must be awful. What? Your kind of work makes you suspicious of everybody and everything. Mm -hmm. Still, it's better than being afraid of everybody and everything. What do you mean by that? I'll tell you later. Here comes the sergeant again. Well, Corbett? Mrs. Finch can go in now if she wants. What did he say to you, Corbett? He has a story. Yeah? Uh-huh. He admits he was at Lucille Landis's, but he says he got there after the murder. He found the gun then and took gun. it with him. That's gun. how he got it. Gun, Miss Landis's, you... You weren't here about the money. This was about the murder. Uh, easy, Mrs. Finch. You can't think Elliot did it. He'd never hurt anyone. He didn't do it. Why can't you leave him alone? When a man has a murder gun, you don't just leave him alone. But he told yeah, you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You buy his alibi, Corbett? For now, he's not going anywhere. That's right. But suppose I could rip his alibi right down the middle. What? How? Well, suppose I could prove he took the gun with him too, Miss Landis's, that he went there to kill her. Go ahead. He can't. It's a lie. Mrs. Finch told me her husband admitted taking the money, but she tried to conceal his connection with Miss Landis. Now, why? I told you. Was it you, because I... she knew what was going to happen and she wanted to protect Finch? No. Couldn't she have seen him take the gun? That would frighten her into trying to hide his affair with Miss Landis. No, you, you must believe me. I, I wouldn't shield Elliot. Not if he were a murderer. Well, you tried to protect him when you knew he was a thief. I didn't. You didn't want him jailed for it. You seemed to think it was all right for him to take the money. You said he was just yielding to temptation. Your only criticism was of the police and me for wanting to catch him. Well, I... Well, what could I do? He, he's my husband. I, I love him. Naturally, I don't want to see him go to jail. Mm -hmm. Nice code of ethics. Anything he does is okay, as long as he's your husband. Embezzlement? Murder? You don't understand. No, oh, the trouble is, I do. Corbett, I think you have a case. You can make an arrest. No. Elliot didn't kill that woman, I tell you. He didn't. I will see. But he's sick. This this might kill him. Let him alone till he's stronger. Then you'll see. He'll be able to prove You mean there'll be time to think up another alibi? It's no use, Mrs. Finch. Oh, why do you have to be so hard, so unfeeling? I know. It's another side of that rotten work I'm in. Well, Corbett? Okay. No, please. If nothing else will stop you, I'll confess. I killed her. I did it. She's sure determined to protect that guy. Yeah, only she happens to be telling the truth. 
Huh? But you said... I didn't say anything. I simply asked some hypothetical questions. But now I am saying Mrs. Finch killed Miss Landis, Corbett. You said before I could arrest Finch for the murder. No, no. I said you could make an arrest. You can. So what are you waiting for? Yes? Mr. Waring is on line one, Mr. Murdoch. Right. Hello, Waring. What news? Well, I've wrapped it up. You did? Finch? Yep, I hung it on him. There's been an arrest? Yep. Right. <laughs> Come on over and tell me about it. I'll give you your check. Well, there's not much to tell. You wanted me to prove Finch killed Miss Landis, so I did. Good. Yeah, forced the real murderer into confessing. What? Yes, Mrs. Finch didn't like her husband being ruined by another woman, so she eliminated the other woman. Mrs. Finch? Yeah, that's right, Murdoch. She's the one who killed your partner. But I didn't think you'd mind it turning out like this. All you really wanted was for me to prove you didn't do it, right? Yeah, Waring, but I was so sure Yes, that... I know. You ought to be careful about that, Murdoch. You know, there's a theory we're supposed to operate on that a man is innocent until he's proved guilty. Not a bad idea. I'll see you around. Don't look so smug, Waring. You were lucky, that's all. Was I, Corbett? You thought Finch was our boy. It just happened Mrs. Finch broke down. Mm Mm-hmm. And I had nothing to do with it? Not intentionally. I suppose I tell you I suspected her almost from the first minute I met her. More hypothetical questions? No, no. On the level. Okay, you suspected her. You suspect everyone. (laughs) That's what she said. But I picked her as the best bet. Why? Because one of the first questions she asked me was, are you from Style Center? What does that prove? Nothing. But she followed it up with, get out of here, go on back to Mr. Murdoch. Style Center isn't just Mr. Murdoch. It is, or was, Murdoch and Lucille Landis. But Cora Finch had already crossed off Landis. And I couldn't help wondering why. I see. Then what clinched it was her holding back on me about Finch's tie-up with the Landis woman. Although she knew about it all the time. Could have been she was protecting her husband like you suggested at the hospital. Yeah, except that when she heard her husband was better, that he would live and could talk, suddenly she told me about him and Lucille Landis. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so she couldn't have been trying to protect him, or she would have continued to keep quiet. So you figured she wasn't covering for him, but for herself. Sure. She didn't want us to know that she was wise to her husband and the Landis woman, because then we wouldn't know she had a motive to kill her. Uh Uh-huh. But when she found out her husband was going to live and might admit he had told her the whole story, she decided to spill the works. That's right. She thought it would look better coming from her than it would if we latched onto it ourselves. But instead it cooked her. Well, she's not cooked yet, Corbett. Just about, with the confession and all, but I reserve final judgment until the jury comes in. Why so cautious all of a sudden, Mike? I just like to practice what I preach, and I've been preaching. Isn't that a little out of character for you? Well, could be. In fact, seems to me this whole case is out of character for you. <laughs> well, how come? Well, there are only two gals in it. One of them gets herself bumped off. You pin the job on the other one, and that leaves you holding hands with me. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> You're overlooking one thing, Corbett. What's that, Mike? The receptionist in Murdoch's office. She's waiting. And I'll just have time to pick her up. So here's where you get off. <laughs> Good night, Sergeant. <laughs> The Case of the Frozen Lettuce. The Case of the Frozen Lettuce. That's the title of next week's adventure of The Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that a person who tries to keep his mouth shut may wind up silent as the grave. So be sure to listen next week at the same time to another exciting Adventure of the Falcon. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, Produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written tonight by Jerome Epstein, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was conducted by Harry Sosnick. Les Damon was starred as The Falcon, with Ken Lynch as Sergeant Corbett. Tonight, Theater Guild on the Air presents a thrilling courtroom drama starring lovely Paulette Goddard, the wonderful Pat O'Brien, and handsome Tom Drake. The story is the highly dramatic trial of Mary Dugan. 
Hear all three top stars in The Trial of Mary Dugan later on Theater Guild on the Air. This program came from New York. Peter Roberts speaking. Stay tuned for Phil Harris, then Sam Spade on NBC. of the larcenous lark. It's late Wednesday night in New York, and in Arnie Kessler's very private gambling club on East 69th Street, tall, handsome, gray-haired George Watkins stands at the end of the dice table shaking the dice cup in his manicured hand and makes his roll. Five's your number. Righto. Once again, Watkins shakes the cup. Come on, little five. And makes his roll. Seven. Watkins smiles wryly, shrugs lightly, puts down the cup and pushes through the crowd. He finds the door to Kessler's private office open and walks in. Kessler is seated at the desk. Oh, Watkins. Sit down. Thanks. How'd it go tonight? Well, for you, fine. I'm clean. Tough luck. Oh, bound to change. Uh, how's my credit? Strain to the limit. I'm afraid I'll have to close the book on you. That's all I wanted to know. Good evening, Kessler. Uh, you're down for 35 grand, Watkins. That's a lot of groceries. I understand. I, I'm a realist, Kessler. Don't fool myself. No false pride, so I have to face the fact. The moment I'm no big shot, I'm flat. Bum investment. I'm surprised you carried me this far. Oh, you'll pay off. I'm glad you're so sure. It's my business to be sure. In that case, a uh, little more credit. Now, let's not overdo a good thing, chum. Got to draw the line somewhere, you know. You just pay that 35 and you can have all the credit you like. All right. I'll get it. You bet you will, Watkins. You bet. Here you are. Just sign these papers and I'll run along. Yeah, just a minute, Watkins. We'd get this. How do you like this phrase? Da da dee, da da da. Uh-uh. Uh, you're right. It's corny. Uh, maybe it's better like this. Da da dee, da da da. Now, nah, now nah, it was better before. Da da dee. Rex, please. I've, I've got to be going. Okay, Watkins. Give me the papers. Here you are. Here's the pen. Okay. You know, it's funny, I had it the right way in my head, but it's gone. Dee, da, dee, da, dee. No. I tell you, if I could remember, it's terrific. All right, Rex, but look what you're doing. Sign of my name. I gotta look for that. Don't you even read what you're signing? I can't be bothered. That's what I pay Watkins for, my business manager, huh, Watkins? <laughs> That's right. Now, now these checks. Right. I think you'd be interested. Interested? In whereases and double entries and capital gains? I say it's spinach and to Watkins with it. Okay, Watkins, there you are. Right, Al. Now you can get back to your work. So long, Rex. Goodbye, Miss Long. Yeah, I'll be seeing you. Bye. You gotta catch it. It's a natural, believe me. What do you know about him? Who? Watkins. Oh, great. Saved me nearly ten grand in income taxes last year. Well, if you don't even check on him, I... Rita, Rita, I know what I'm doing. I make the moolah. Watkins sees that I don't spend it faster than I make it. That's Who's all. Who's to he doesn't spend it? Oh, for the love of Pete, Rita. I mean it. If you expect me to marry you, you've got to have some sense of responsibility. Yeah, sure, sure. Baby, baby, there it is. Da, 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 da. I know, I get it. You like? Not bad. Not bad, it's great. What are you doing? Call am I no good of an agent? Rex, I'm trying to tell Yeah, not now, honey, not now. Hello? Uh, Halloran, Halloran, listen, I've got a number. Even you'll be able to sell it. Who is it? Who is it? The Cole Porter of the 50s. I'm telling you, I've got something that'll make you. Rex? Who else? Look, Rex, before you get all... Now, will you up... shut up? You haven't even heard it yet. Goes with those lyrics I showed you yesterday. Now, listen. Did you hear? Yes. Well? 
It's a nice tune, Rex, but you know that you no can't... No buts, Halloran. This is it. How soon can you get it to Sinatra? Be reasonable, Rex. We can't... Now, look, I don't want any argument. All the time I bang out songs that sell themselves, you try to sit on them. If it wasn't for that contract, believe me, brother, you'd be out, but fair. Listen to the cornball. Where were you before I took you over? Strictly minor leagues. Now it's the big leagues and you're beating them, huh? You got a nice tune. I'll do what I can Now, for look, you. shut up. I want you over here this afternoon, understand? Uh... That creep always got to give me conversation. You'd think a guy'd get some encouragement once in a while, but no, nice tune, he says. And you won't even listen. Got to yap about what? I listen, Rex. It's just that I'm worried. You have to turn everything over to Watkins? All right, look. Look, I'll take it once more, slow. Now try to dig it this time, baby, will you? When you're getting the chips, you hire yourself a business manager. Everybody does it. I'm not the only one. Thanks so much for telling me. But everybody doesn't just sign papers and checks without even knowing what they are. All right, let's not get in a hassle about it, huh? Well, if we're going to get married... Who says we're going to get married? Rex! Well, if it's going to be nag, nag, nag all the You're time... You're not serious. Maybe I am. I don't know. Well, I was only trying to be helpful. I don't... Why, you have... Why, you have... Oh, have for to... Pete's sake. <laughs> Look, baby, I got a great idea banging around in my head. I want to get it on paper. Do you have to pitch a hissy now? I'm sorry, Rex. I just... Now, will you cut it out? <laughs> Honey, honey, look. Doggone it, listen, will you? All right, I'll call Watkins. I'll get an appointment, see. He'll explain just how I stand financially, black and white. Get it all figured out, see. Now, will you please turn off the Niagara and let me get to work? Oh, oh, Kessler. Hello, Watkins. Mind if I come in? No, of course not. Thanks. As a matter of fact, I... I have something for you. Glad to hear it. Yes. Here you are. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five grand. Mm. Good. That leaves an even 30. It uh, may take a little time. Oh, that's all right. Just so long as you settle up before you leave town. Leave town? What makes you You think... bought a ticket for Chicago this morning. How do you know? Have you been having me followed? Let's just say I have a very sensitive Ouija board, hmm? You see, Watkins, when I have money outstanding, I like to keep in touch. That's why I don't want you going away until the account is closed. I should have expected this. Very well, Kessler, you, you've got me. No use denying there's the ticket. I, I was leaving. As a matter of fact, I'm on... Bit of a spot. Let's let's face it, I I'm trapped. How so? Well, I'll tell you. Always was one for cards on the table. It it's like this. That five thousand I just paid you came from Rex Elber. Only Elber doesn't know it. Mm-hmm. I had counted on him for considerably more. From time to time, you understand. You can't rush these things or they show up. Well? Well, Elber called a few minutes ago, wants to go over the account. I don't know what's gotten into him all of a sudden, but there it is. Have to face it. He wants an accounting, and I can't possibly explain the check I cashed. It, well, if it hadn't happened so fast... So you were going to run out. Well, what can I do? Uh, perhaps if you give me back that 5000 and I return it to Rex, he he may not press the charges. Sure. I blow five grand, and if Elba decides not to play ball, you're in the soup anyhow. Well, it was a thought. I don't call that thinking. Well, what can I do? Elber isn't your only client. You have others. That's why I gave you credit. Now oh, they watch closer. Still, I I suppose over a period of time, I could raise the rest. I... Take your time. I won't rush things so long as I get payments on account like this every so often. But I don't have time. That's just it. Elber wants a showdown today. Well, can't you stall him? No, not for long. Only I could keep him from asking about that check that... There must be something I can do. Not only there must be Watkins... There better be. Come in, doors open. Okay, now what can I do? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, what's the idea? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, 
this where Mike Waring lives, the Falcon? Yeah. You him? I'm he. Well, Halloran's my name, Vic Halloran, Rex Elba's agent. Well, congratulations. On what? Being Elba's agent. He must be a gold mine. Golden goose, more like. Somebody killed him. Oh. Yeah, that's why I'm here. I need a detective. Heard a lot about you. Always figure anybody has a reputation, he must have something on the wall. Well, I'll concede the point. Shall we go inside and talk business? No need. I'll only be a minute. I discovered the body, see? So I'm on the spot. Cops just put me through the ringer. Any reason you should be suspected, other than discovering the body? They suspect everybody. Oh, well, and you've got nothing to worry about. No more than anybody else. All right. It's like this, see? Who likes his agent? All the time gripes, how come you aren't doing more for me? Rex and me had words often. Loud words. Uh -huh. But he's my meal ticket. I'm going to knock off my own meal ticket? Ah, uh, yes. The golden goose. Get out of it, will you, Waring? Okay, Halloran. Try Rita Vaughan, warbler at the Zigzag Club. You think she did it? She's mixed up in it. How do you know? She's a dame. Rex is current. And believe me, in a thing like this, always include the dame in. I'll make a note of it. Dames are trouble. You can count it. Nothing but trouble. Halloran, you're speaking of the women I love. Take it from me, Waring. Nothing but trouble. <laughs> Spoken like a confirmed bachelor. Bachelor? I'm paying alimony three ways. Now get on it, Waring, will you? <laughs> Mike Waring has been in Vic Halloran's employ for 20 minutes, just long enough to get from his own place to the Zigzag Club, where Rita Vaughn has just admitted him to her dressing room. All right, Mr. Waring, now what is it? Well, there's no question about it. You're a dame. What a detective. And dames are trouble. Oh? Mm-hmm. I have it on the authority of a three-time loser. And you're looking for trouble? For Rex Elba's trouble. Were you it? I was his dame. Mm-hmm. But I had nothing to do with his death. Uh-huh. So if that's all you want, you might as well run along. Who said it's all I want? I can tell you who killed Rex, if that's what you want. Well, I'd like to get around with that angel, but uh, I'm in no hurry. His business manager, George Watkins. Why do you say that? Rex had an appointment with Watkins today to check on Watkins' handling of Rex's affairs. The murder was a little too opportune to be a coincidence. All right, Rita, I'll check on it. Well, you can't check on it in here. Hey, you seem in a hurry to get rid of me. I'm on in a few minutes. I'd like to get ready. And the show must go on. You said it, Mr. Waring. Maybe you think I'm taking Rex's death too... Maybe you think it doesn't mean anything. But I... Oh, get out of here, will you? <laughs> Hello, is George Watkins around? Who wants to know? Mike Waring. Well, well, the Falcon. This is an unexpected pleasure. Uh, you must be Arnie Kessler. I must be. Can I offer you a drink? No, thanks. You uh, get around a lot. 33. How come you got around here? Could be I like roulette. Oh, you know better than the buck the house percentage, Waring? <laughs> That's no way to encourage business. Some kinds of business I can do without. So you're uh, looking for George Watkins, huh? Yeah, I understand he's a regular patron here. I wanted to confirm it. You expect an answer from me? No, I guess not. Is that all you wanted? Well, I'd like to know how Watkins was doing. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't think you'd tell me. Uh, I'm not crazy. I start talking about my client's affairs, I'd be out of business fast. Well, in that case, I guess I'm just wasting my time around here. I'm glad to realize it. Might as well be running. Oh, no need to run, Waring. You can walk. As long as it's to the nearest exit. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Watkins. This is Arnie Kessler. Yes, Kessler. What is it? Who knew that Rex Elba wanted an accounting with you today? Well, I didn't know anyone did, except you. Why? Mike Waring was just here, the Falcon. He guessed you'd been losing at the tables. Oh, dear. Relax. He's still guessing. I didn't give him anything. But if he's checking... I don't think he can prove anything, but I thought you ought to know. Yes, yes. Thanks, Kessler. But, but who could have put him on to... Of course. That girl. What girl? Rita Vaughn. Never did care for her style of singing. Maybe I can figure a way to make her change her tune. Hello, Rita. Oh, Mr. Waring. Is 
back again, huh? Yeah, I thought I'd catch the last show. But as long as you're table hopping, uh, how about perching at mine for a while? Well, I only have a minute. I'll settle for that. All right. I've been checking on Watkins. Find out anything? Uh-huh. He likes to gamble. Oh, well, that could explain... Uh-uh. What's wrong? Speak of the devil. Hello, Mr. Watkins. Hello, Rita. Am I interrupting anything? Yes, you certainly are. But sit down, you old devil. I beg your pardon? Uh, Mr. Watkins, this is Michael Waring. Waring? Oh, yes. Yes, I've heard of you. From Arnie Kessler. Why do you ask that? Why don't you answer it? Uh, I want to talk to Rita. <laughs> Get in line. I was here first. I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint both of you. Time for my number. See you later. Has Rita been talking about me, Waring? That's Rita. I intend to. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here she is. The little lady you've all been waiting for to play and sing for you, Rita Vaughn. Oh. Thank you, Harry. Thank you. Well, I have something that I hope will be a treat for you. It's a brand new number that I wrote myself. And here it is for the first time anywhere. I hope you like it. She didn't come back to the table, Waring. She said she... something scared her. Didn't you see her face when she left the floor, Watkins? No, I didn't notice. That's why I wanted to get back here to the dressing room. Don't here it is. Hey. Somebody's in there. Yeah. Look out, Watkins. Let's see if this door's unlocked. Yeah, it is. Mr. Waring. Yes, Rita. Come to take you in my arms. No, let's go. Not while you're waving shooting irons. Sorry, right, Waring. She missed. Yeah, so I see, Halloran. But let's not give her another shot at you. What are you doing here, anyway? Telling her off. She's a crook. She hit me. That's why I grabbed the gun. It was self-defense. She's a crook, a grave robber. Did you hit her? We were arguing. Did you hit her? What difference did is it? Did you hit her, Halloran? Well, maybe I did. Then the gunplay really was self-defense. I told you. Uh-huh, but I want Halloran to tell me. Well, yes, it was. All right. Then I can let her go. As much as I enjoy holding you in my arms, Rita, I like it under different circumstances. Now, what went on in here? Well, when I heard her singing that song, Did I... you hear... I didn't see you in the club. I was over at the side, near the door. All right, you heard the song. Yeah, she said it was her song. She made it up. I did. Rex called me this morning. All hopped up. Here's a new number. Plays it for me over the phone. It's this very song, Waring, this very song. I played it for Rex. That's where he got it. He said it was his. We were going to publish it under his name. We thought it would be more popular. Look, I know Rex's style. You can't I know me... his style, too. I was influenced by it, I admit that. But I wrote that song. That's a lie. Well, even if it is, Halloran, is that any call to slug the girl? Or did you just toss that in because you don't like Dane? I couldn't help blowing my lid, Waring. I'm, I'm sorry, but this crooked Dane All right, here. all right, hold it. Rita, you say you made up this song? Yes. When? This morning. Rex was working on a tune. It was something like this one, but not the same. Watkins, you were there, you remember. Yes. Well, then Watkins left, and Rex and I were talking, and all of a sudden it came to me. And you played it for Rex? Yes. And he played it for Halloran? Yes, and he told me that... I know the... what he told you. Did you play it for anyone else, Rita, until tonight? No. And it's just your word against Halloran's. Well, yes, I don't but know I... what you hope to prove, Waring. Each one will stick to his own story. Oh, I think I've proved plenty, Watkins. What? Who killed Rex Elber? You what? I've proved who killed Rex Elber. Maybe that isn't as important as who wrote the music, but it should determine who's going to have to face it. Who, Waring? Well, considering that Watkins is in deep to Kessler... Where'd you get that idea? Maybe from Kessler himself. You couldn't. Why not? Because I... Because I don't owe him. That's not what Kessler told me, Watkins. He didn't tell you anything. What makes you so sure? He told me he didn't. And there must be something he could... Rita, look out! Oh, oh, don't. Too late, Waring. Oh. I've got the gun from her. Now, what good do you think it's going to do you? Well, there's one sure thing. Won't do you any good if you make a move. So stay where you are, all of you. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Fifteen minutes have passed since George Watkins grabbed Rita's gun and beat a hasty retreat from the zigzag club. Mike has used that time to hurry to Arnie Kessler's apartment, where Kessler's thug Rocky has just ushered him in. Here he is, Mr. Kessler. Yeah. All right, Waring. What is it this time? Well, I put you on kind of a spot, Kessler. I figured I ought to tell you. What kind of a spot? I told George Watkins you tipped me about his owing you. He grabbed a gun and cleared out. I thought he might come here. Thanks for the warning. I can take care of myself. Yeah, sure. Still, I thought you ought to know. All right. But uh, how come he fell for your bluff? 
Oh, I guess he's out of his element. I imagine that until today, except for weakness for gambling, Watkins stuck pretty close to the straight and narrow. Yeah. And since he really is in hock to you... Is he? ...his running out ought to clinch it. How do I know he ran out? Just because you say so? <laughs> well, I see you're not as green as Watkins. Disappointed? No, I expected it. Well, that could be the answer to if I'm bluffing. Yeah. Iraqi. Okay, Mr. Kessler. And just in case Waring isn't bluffing you, that's Watkins. Check him for artillery. Right. I want to see Kessler. Sure. Turn around. Why? So far, you're right, Waring. It's Watkins. And when you get to know me better, Kessler, you'll never doubt me. Oh, Brad. All right, Mr. Kessler. Here he is. And here's his heater. Waring. Hello, Watkins. I've been expecting you. I should have known. You are on his side, That's Kessler. what he wants you to think. But if you shut up and let me do the talking... Well, certainly, certainly. Uh, might as well face it. I, I bungled again played right into his hands. Maybe, but now we have him on our home ground. Oh, please, Kessler, no violence. That's not I... what I had in mind. At least for now. But as long as we're both here together, he can't play one off against the other like he's been doing. No, that's not necessary. I've proved my point. I wouldn't say so. You rattled Watkins. He lost his head. And came running to you. Why? To check on what you told him. He thought I might have lied about him. You mean he wanted to see if you told the truth about him? <laughs> it's no use, Kessler. I know he's in hock to you. Now that I know who the murderer is, it's the only thing that makes sense. Oh, you know that? To? Yeah, sure. Waring, I know how it looks. Out of the talking, Watkins. Are you uh, suggesting that Watkins killed Elba, Waring? Oh, well, I haven't said that. But I thought... You he... shouldn't jump to conclusions, Watkins. Well, but then it... I, I don't understand. Unless you think I'm the murderer, what difference does it make if I owe Kessler money? My relation with him doesn't affect anyone else. It affects Kessler. And... But surely you can't think he killed Rex. Why, why, they didn't even know each other. I know they didn't. Well, then... Now, Wait. Elba demanded an accounting with you today, didn't he, Watkins? Never mind, don't answer, but you know he did. And you've been juggling the account to pay off Kessler, so you got panicked. Well, well, shut up, Watkins. Yes. All right, you told Kessler about the spot you were in. You paid off part of what you owed him, but there was still a heavy balance. Now, if Elba sent you to jail, Kessler would never get his balance. So he killed Elba to protect his investment in you. So that's it. How many times do I have to tell you to shut up, Watkins? Oh, I'm the one you'll have to shut up, Kessler. But before you decide on the rough play you so thoughtfully postponed before, you ought to know the police know I came up here. Yeah? You think I'd have stuck my neck out like this otherwise? Let's face it, Kessler, the jig is up. One thing I don't understand, Waring. What's that, Halloran? You said my argument with Rita about the song is what tipped you to the murderer. Yes, it did. But if Kessler's the murderer, he had nothing to do with the song. That's just the point. What? He didn't know Elba. Had nothing to do with him. Then how could now, he... look, look, Halloran. Regardless of who really wrote the song, either way, we know that until last night, only you and Rita and Elba had ever heard the song, right? Yes. But when I was at Kessler's before Rita played it at the club, Kessler was humming the song. He was? He was. So I knew he must have been at Elber's. Remember Elber was at the piano when he was murdered? He must have been playing the tune when Kessler killed him. I see. Uh -huh. So that takes care of the murder. Now everything is settled except who really wrote the song. Oh, oh that, that's settled too. Oh, it is? Yeah, yes, I was wrong. Rita wrote it all right. We had a long talk and she convinced me. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, quite a dame, Waring. Quite a dame. <laughs> but you didn't like dames. Who, me? Oh, all I said was... Anybody who falls for a dame must be nuts. Uh-huh. Well, Waring, shake hands with Napoleon Bonaparte. Mm -hmm.